They may make for an odd pairing, but hey, love is a mysterious thing. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 opposites attract TV couples. You're Daphne? Why, yes I am. Well, uh, when Fraser told me he'd hired an English woman, I pictured someone a little more, uh, not quite so. You're Daphne? <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be looking at live-action small-screen couples with seemingly incompatible interests, lifestyles, and personalities, who are nonetheless drawn to one another. Sadly, cartoon couples need not apply for this particular list, no matter how mismatched they may be. I'm your lawyer. It's unethical. Number 10. Cordelia Chase and Xander Harris, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Coward. Moron. I hate you! I hate you! Of all the weird supernatural things going on in Sunnydale, this relationship is among the most challenging to comprehend. Cordelia is the high school's resident queen bee and mean girl, whose popularity is surpassed only by her natural tendency to aggressively taunt those around her. Nice dress! Good to know you've seen the softer side of Sears. By contrast, Xander is a goofy social outcast and, according to Willow, treasurer of the We Hate Cordelia Club. If you dare breathe a word of this... Like I want anyone to know. Then it's a race. Never happened. Good. Good. Good! Despite, or perhaps because of the tension between them, the two begin a passionate relationship in season two while hiding from one of Sunnydale's monsters. That's not me. <laughs> They arguably complement each other, with Xander turning Cordelia into a warmer person and Cordelia helping Xander become more open-minded. But sadly, it was never meant to last. Gee, Xander, maybe you should learn a second language so that even more girls can reject you. Number 9. Margaret Hotlips Houlihan and Hawkeye Pierce, MASH. All the time when we were insulting each other, yeah. every once in a while, I'd wonder what it would be like to be you know, close to you. All is definitely not fair in love and war. That's what Captain Hawkeye Pierce and Major Margaret Hotlips Houlihan discover while serving in the Korean War. Hawkeye and Hotlips often find themselves at odds, mostly because each is the antithesis of the other. You know all those rotten things I've said to you? All those nasty little tricks I played on you? Yes. I'd like to get well and do them all over again. She's a by-the-book nurse, and he's a laid-back goofball surgeon. She respects authority, and he couldn't care less about it. She follows the rules while he prefers to break them. You are my favorite officer in the whole U.S. Army. Same goes for me, Major. You're aces. But despite the fact that they frequently infuriate each other, the war inevitably pushes them together. I don't think anything could ever come of it because we're so different, but something happened to us out there. Both of us. Maybe we cared for each other a little bit more than either of us would like. Throughout the series, they often find comfort in one another's arms. War may be miserable, but misery loves company. I want you to know chivalry isn't dead. It's just been replaced by exhaustion. Number 8. Dharma Frieda Montgomery and Gregory Clifford Greg Montgomery. Dharma and Greg. God, I wish there was some way we could just skip the dating part. What happens when an open-minded, spontaneous yoga instructor named Dharma and an uptight lawyer named Greg decide to tie the knot on the first date? Five seasons of wacky comedy. I'm glad we waited till after we were married. <laughs> <laughs> it's only after they elope that they realize how different they are. And the rest of the series revolves around Dharma trying to get Greg to have more fun, while Greg tries to keep Dharma grounded in reality. Oh, silly, you don't sleep in the rain, you make love in the rain. Ah. Uh. <laughs> What if there's lightning? Regardless of their many disagreements and dissimilar worldviews, the lovebirds never really express regret over their lightning-fast elopement. I promise to always let you be you and me be me. Their respective parents, on the other hand, take much longer to warm up to one another. What's <laughs> absurd is having a union of souls without first purifying the spirit. So, you people are just complete weirdos, is that it? <laughs> Number seven, April Kepner and Jackson Avery, Grey's Anatomy. I'm heading to the on-call room. Take a little nap. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Too bad you won't be getting any sleep. You don't need a heart monitor to see how these two feel about each other. 
Starting off as close friends, doctors April Kepner and Jackson Avery eventually start a steamy romance. The two seem mismatched. April is insecure and sensitive, while Jackson is cocky and competitive. Complicating things further is the fact that April was saving herself for marriage, a plan that flies out the window after getting closer to Jackson. I mean, what am I? I'm, I'm, I'm not the guy that made you break your promise to Jesus? I'm not that guy. Her conflicting feelings about this, as well as Jackson's fixation on his own career advancement, put a strain on their relationship, leading to a short-lived marriage that ends in tragedy. Every part of a trauma tells a different piece of the story. This is one of the simpler divorces I've seen, actually. Despite such hardships, the show has made it clear that things are far from over between these two. You're on Tinder. So what? So are you. That's uh, not, not, not lately. I'm not. How did you know that? Number six, Temperance Bones Brennan and Celie Booth. Bones. Okay. I have to remove your clothing now. Why? When you spend most of your time around skeletons, odds are even the most incompatible partner will start to look good. You have the perfect chromium. Such was the case for Dr. Temperance Bones Brennan calculating an analytical forensic anthropologist. She's brought on as a consultant to help personable, all-American, instinct-driven FBI agent Seely Booth. They begin a shaky professional relationship that gradually turns into friendship as the two bond over their shared crime-busting experiences. Eventually, this friendship becomes much more. So, we're doing it? We're doing it. Leading to marriage and kids, though not necessarily in that order. We don't have to chase each other anymore because we caught each other. Like peanut butter and chocolate, Bones and Booth are rather dissimilar and quite good on their own, but when combined, they become something remarkably close to perfection. I thought we said that there was no TV during the landing. Mommy says it's educational. Number five, Detective Amelia Amy Santiago and Detective Jacob Jake Peralta, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. So the store was hit about two hours ago. They took mostly tablets, laptops, and cameras. Sorry. These cops clash so much, it's amazing they haven't arrested each other yet. Five felonies in one week. Light them up, Boyle! <laughs> Styling himself as a loose cannon cop who doesn't play by the rules, unsophisticated and juvenile Jake Peralta is often at odds with fellow detective Amy Santiago, an ambitious overachiever with no patience for lame jokes or slackers. If I'm ever gonna make captain, I need a good mentor. I need my rabbi. But because they're forced to spend so much time together, their disdain for each other eventually turns into respect, admiration, and finally love. So a lot of change around here, huh? It doesn't change them, though. Jake continues to act like a clown, and Amy maintains her obsessive, hyper-organized ways. There's a binder? Why didn't you lead with that, you idiot? <sighs> I'm gonna just leave you two alone. Nonetheless, they somehow managed to work surprisingly well together, both romantically and when solving crime. Uh, we have the rest of our lives to talk. Yeah, unless he kills us first. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird joke. Regret saying that one. Wow, things are clicking. Number four, Diane Chambers and Sam Malone. Cheers. Didn't you ever fantasize about me? Yeah, I guess I did. And I you. What did you fantasize about? Mostly, stop using phrases like, and I, you. These two co-workers might trade more insults than compliments, but don't let that behavior fool you. The attraction runs deep. After Diane is left by her fiancé, womanizing ex-baseball player and bartender Sam Malone gives her a job as a cocktail waitress. Probably gonna regret this, but you could work here. Thus begins one of the most famous instances of belligerent sexual tension in TV history. Isn't it interesting that I automatically spring to mind? No. You automatically spring to mind whenever I hear something stupid. College-educated Diane doesn't hesitate to put down Sam Chauvinist ways with witty remarks. And in turn, Sam calls out Diane's high and mighty attitude and aristocratic aspirations. Well, Sam, <laughs> aren't you going to gloat? I'd like to think I'm above that, Diane. <laughs> All the immature arguing only seems to bring them closer together, though. And Sam and Diane go on to get engaged. Twice. Do you agree that we shouldn't get married? I do. 
ever complicated but never quite right, we'll drink to this duo any day. Good, I'll tell you what you do. I'll tell you what you do. One, two, three. Number three, April Ludgate and Andy Dwyer, Parks and Recreation. What's your middle name? The Justice of the Peace lady needs to know. You don't know each other's middle names? I'm gonna say it out loud. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Roberta! As one of the longest-running pairings on the show, negative, cynical April and goofy, simple-minded Andy manage to defy all odds and stay together to the end. I kind of hate most things, but I never really seem to hate you. So I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Is that cool? Yes. Despite Andy's immaturity... Where's all the faces? The presidents. And April's hatred of almost everything, the two always manage to bring out the best in each other, whether they're throwing a party or shopping. Even when their relationship is put to the dreaded long distance test, they remain faithful and committed. Throughout the series, they never stop caring for each other and are willing to support one another's dreams through thick and thin. How it works, we'll never know, but we'd certainly like some of whatever it is they've got. Wait, wait, wait. I made you five bologna sandwiches in case you get hungry on the way to the airport. Did you? Yes, I use cookies instead of bread. You think of everything. I love you. Love you too. Number two, Rachel Green and Ross Geller, friends. <laughs> hey. They might share the same initials, but the common ground between these two friends mostly ends there. Rachel Green is an occasionally self-absorbed social butterfly that comes from a wealthy background. Ross Geller is more socially awkward. I think if I could no, not have done this without you. <laughs> okay, um, uh, more clothes in the dryer? <laughs> and though he's smart, he can also be very arrogant at times. What the hell was that? A lesson in the importance of unagi. Nonetheless, Ross and Rachel are inexplicably attracted to one another. Over the years, they become close friends, married, divorced, and even had a child together. But their high-strung personalities always seem to get in the way. Although theirs was a less than smooth love story, Ross and Rachel gave fans the fairy tale ending we all wanted in the series finale, finally embracing each other for good, faults and all. Oh my God, did she get off the plane? Did she get off the plane? I got off the plane. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I had a good time last night. Me too. It was perfect. I loved it. I have to go. You touch me like that and then you tell me you have to go. There's something I need to do. Miss Fine, this is insanity. There's absolutely no way you could have won that contest legitimately. Oh, no? No. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, you asked for it, Basta. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, Penny and Leonard Hofstadter, The Big Bang Theory. Have you ever heard of Schrodinger's cat? <laughs> Actually, I've heard far too much about Schrodinger's cat. Good. This is the classic tale of beauty and the geek. As the central romantic plot for much of the series, Leonard and Penny's relationship is as tumultuous as it gets. So what do you think? Are we going to get back together? Whoa, not so fast. I'm sorry, what did I say? Leonard, you know I will always have feelings for you. Oh, God. Leonard is a brilliant and successful physicist with a passion for nerd culture, but has little social skills to speak of. Penny, on the other hand, is literally the beautiful girl next door. <laughs> Oh, hi. 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 <laughs> hi. And while very outgoing and friendly, compared to the boys from apartment 4A, she's not exactly an intellectual. <laughs> My inference is justified. Sheldon, you are so funny. <laughs> but just like protons and electrons, they can't help but be attracted to each other. Penny helps Leonard come out of his shell, and Leonard helps Penny embrace her geekier side. We stick together and we can see it through, because... You've got a friend in me. <laughs> Is that the song from Toy Story? He loves that movie. I do. Now, if only Sheldon would leave them alone. Leonard and Penny. <laughs> do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.